Hi everyone, my name is Shan. I'm a software engineer from the data visualization team at Uber. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the open source library that the data visualization team built to, uh, to do large scale geospatial visualizations in, in the browser. So at Uber, you know, understanding geospatial data is crucial to our business. We're doing millions of trips every day and it's, we're doing uh, trips in seven, 70 countries and five continents. Every day we're collecting billions of geospatial data points and then um, we need to figure out a way to better understand them to better you know, gain insights from this gazillion large amount of uh, geospatial data. So at the visualization team, we have a big challenge. Um, this is uh, the visualization I made a long time ago when I actually first joined Uber, which was four years ago. Uh, I took one day of trips in London, and then I made this animation with just this one day of trips. Every single line you're looking at here is one trip driving across uh, a single street in London city. So there's no road in this map. Everything is dark, but just by looking at those single lines of trip, you can see the whole city contacts in front of your eyes. That's why visualization is crucial to us is just by doing this kind of, you know, in this case, just animation, you can get an understanding of how large our business are, where are we driving at, and, and then, you know, how much impact we're doing just to one city. So this is like everyday life, right? Um, we at the visualization team make hundreds of maps every day. Um, we try to use maps to help us better gain insights from all this um, geospatial data. Everything looks great because you know, we have a large data set, but we also have a large challenge. You know, at the end of the day, what I don't want people would come to me saying that, I love the maps you did. Uh, can I use it as my screensaver? And we, we actually want people to, you know, look beyond the beautiful graphics to actually learn something from the data sets. That's why uh, we did, uh, at the visualization team, we developed this sets of tools for people to better build applications to visualize geospatial data sets. All of the libraries are open sourced. You can probably gain a little bit insight by the naming of it. It's like Kepler GL, React GL. DECGL, LumaGL, and ReactVis. You know, it's probably, you know, a lot of our front-end web is built with React. A lot of our web-based um, mapping visualization is, is built on top of WebGL, which is uh, the 3D, run, high-performance 3D rendering graphics that your browser already comes with. You, you know, nothing you have to install. And we build these libraries just to make us e much easier to build high-performance visualizations. So today there's two, two libraries I'm going to uh, mainly focusing on. One is the DECGL library, the other is Kepler GL. DECGL is a layer-based visualization library built specifically for uh, high-performance geospatial visualizations. It's a framework that you can use to build maps and, and then put visualization layer on top of it. Kepler GL is actually an application, but also a framework. We use Kepler GL so that it is, it is a framework so that allow you to visualize and analyze a large scale of data set without have to write one single line of code. And Kepler GL is also built on top of DECGL. So starting with DECGL, what is DECGL? So DECGL is visualization focused. It's, to, it's for rendering big array of data. And it's uh, focusing on geospatial. All positions can be a geospatial data point. And it's also reactive. It's uh, coupled nicely with React. So all the front-end application will be with React and just import DECGL and render high-performance maps. DECGL have this layers ecosystem. Every single visualization is one layer that DECGL managed to show on top of a base map. DECGL come with a set of layers such as arc and a hexagon and scatter plot, all already sets for visualizing geospatial data sets. And DECGL uses concept called instance rendering because uh, if you think about an array of a thousand data points, each of the data points actually share a lot of common, common attributes like latitude and longitude. The only thing might be different is their metadata. So 
with WebGL's instancing rendering, DeckGL was able to render like a million of points uh, parallel, in parallel in your browser with, without too much of a choke up. And then um, DeckGL is also handling a lot of geospatial operations inside your GPU. You don't have to actually worry about it. We do uh, map projection inside the GPU. We calculate, uh, we calculate camera viewpoint inside the GPU. That's why you were able to get this like rendering 300,000 points, in this case, actually a million particles in the browser, um, you know, smoothly. This is a wind map that Yang here made. It's, it's quite awesome. And all this happens in your browser. And if you're interested, we actually, uh, DeckGL is open source. We have a lot of examples hosted on DeckGL's website. Um, you can take any of the examples starting your own like, map application with DeckGL um, pretty easily. And going beyond DeckGL is KeplerGL. Um, this is a framework we just open sourced like a month ago. Um, with DeckGL, you're a front-end developer. You still write your own code. You can build very flexible map applications. But you know, for someone who come with a data science background who don't want to write any code, but just want to understand what is in their data sets, we offer this another framework called Kepler GL. It's hosted as a demo app on our website. It can handle the millions of data points and allow you to do explorations and visualizing it without having to write one single line of code. We built Kepler GL for fast visual exploration of millions of geospatial data in the browser. So Kepler GL uh, streamlined this geospatial analysis process. You start, you're starting by upload a file, CSV or GeoJSON, and then Kepler GL give you all those options that allow you to filter them and give you a set of nice, very nice uh, industry standard geospatial visualization layers so you can just draw maps with them. And those are the layers that come with Kepler GL. You don't have to write any single line of code to make this kind of visualization, like the heat map or the scatter plot or uh, hex spinning. And it has a nice UI design, and it's very easy to use. Like it's very intuitive. You it allow you to, you know, associate your values with like colors or size for you to, you know, draw insights from, uh, draw uh, nice looking um, geospatial maps. And just one of the demo I made just by jogging, uh, jo drag and drop this GeoJSON file I got um, for, I think this is San Francisco contour map. I quickly assigned colors to the elevation of the contour, and then I changed between different color palettes, and then I know, moved the, the labels on top. All this just done in like a one minute. As long as you have a GeoJSON with some data with it, you can interact and then make maps fairly quickly. Beyond that, Kepler GL also has a, a, allow you to do geospatial temporal visualizations. If your data comes with any kind of time timestamp or date, um, Kepler GL allow you to uh, to add this animation to it, so you can play back through the whole duration of your data set to see what happens through time. It also does uh, on the fly ge geospatial aggregations. So, for example, in this case, I'm drawing a hex spinning map showing the density of all the points. In this case, it's all the trips in LA. And um, I was able to change uh, the resolution of my hex spin. I was able to add like a three dimension to it just so that uh, the, the outlier is more visible in, in a three dimensional feature. And in the end, because a lot of uh, Uber's data is trip-based, in this trip-based, you have this concept of origin and destinations. Um, Kepler GL also have this function that allow you to looking at like trips or arcs start or end in a specific region where your mouse hover over. And this is, this is useful for us to understand which part of the city have trips goes to another part of the city. And all this uh, interaction calculations down in the GPU, that's why it is very smooth, so you can just move around quickly. Um, so tech that 
Kepler GL is built with React and Redux. It's actually a React components that can be embedded into other applications. We package Kepler GL's state and inside the Redux reducer so that um, it's actually fairly easy for you to customize its behavior. And then you can just uh, import Kepler GL into your React app and then import the Kepler GL reducer into your uh, Redux store. And if you're interested in how to use it, we also have a website called Vista.academy. On there, we're listing all our open source library, DECGL, Kepler GL, and then have a step-by-step -step tutorial uh, tell you how to actually build your own app with our open, open, open source libraries. <laughs>